Rotary knobs have been around for decades. They come in various shapes and sizes and provide distinct haptic experiences. Results from prior work suggest that there exists a relationship between a knob shape, haptic feel and functionality. Circular knobs relate well to constant haptic stimuli with little friction and are used to control variables in a continuous scale with a large range. Grooves provide better grip and make a knob more appropriate for stimuli with higher force intensities and improve its relation to step stimuli. The number and size of the grooves seem to correlate with the size and intensity of the haptic steps. When combined with step stimuli, these knobs are most appropriate for control of discrete variables. Indicator knobs were most suitable for control of variables with a few possible states. The pointer knob shape relates well to all haptic stimuli, but is not always the most appropriate. These results were obtained from evaluations without context. Building on this work, we evaluate if we can utilize this relationship to improve the interaction with dynamic knobs that are used for a variety of functionalities. We explored this by evaluating the use of DynaNob, a rotary knob that can morph into four distinct shapes whilst providing dynamic force feedback. We present two studies. The first study evaluates DynaNob as indirect input device for a graphical user interface, while the second study focuses on the performance of DynaNob. For the first study, we carefully designed the interaction between the dynamic properties of the knob and the graphical user interface. When scrolling to the calendar, small grooves would appear at the circumference of the knob and subtle steps could be felt. The pointer knob shape was used for selection of menu items. The circular positioning of the menu items correlated with the haptic feedback provided by the knob. Text characters were selected with the pointer knob shape combined with subtle steps. The tab knob shape was used to select hours, while the serrated knob shape was used for minutes. We validated the need for an indicator by combining the tab knob shape with stimuli that restrict the rotation. For scrolling through long lists, the serrated knob shape was used in combination with subtle steps. The telephone dial provided spring feedback with subtle steps inspired by old-fashioned fonts. And here are some more examples of knob shapes that were used for discrete selection and level adjustment. Here's a brief impression of the way we implemented DynaNob as indirect input device for the graphical user interface. The buttons on top of the knob were used to engage with selected items and switch between different elements of the interface. We evaluated four conditions, no feedback, haptic feedback, shape change and a combination of haptic feedback and shape change. Participants were seated behind the desk with a monitor. The graphical user interface was displayed on the screen. DynaNob was positioned at a 53 degree angle to make it easier for participants to focus on the graphical user interface and DynaNob simultaneously. 20 participants took part in the study. They completed seven tasks for each condition. These are a few examples. After each set of seven tasks was completed, participants evaluated the usability using the SUS questionnaire and their experience using the attractive questionnaire. This graph shows the usability ratings for the different conditions. All results were similar to the baseline condition circular knob shape without feedback. These are the results for conditions with only haptic feedback, only shape change and the combination of haptic feedback and shape change. Also, the results of the attractive questionnaire did not reveal any significant differences on the pragmatic scale. Feedback provided by the knob did increase the scores on the hedonic quality scale in contrast to conditions without feedback. Both haptic force feedback and shape change had a positive effect. The results might be partially attributed to the visual dominance of the graphical user interface. Participants stated it was difficult to focus on the graphical user interface and dine up at the same time. Graphical user interface provided adequate feedback about functionality of the knob, which made the tangible feedback from the knob redundant. In contrast to prior evaluations without context, knobs without position indicator relate well to stimuli that restricted the rotation, because information about the position of the knob was communicated elsewhere. 
Subsequently, we evaluated the performance of Dynanop for normal and ice-free interaction. For conditions with visual feedback, the rotation of the knob is displayed on the screen. For non-visual conditions, no feedback was provided on the screen, and the curtain was used to hide the knob. The set of evaluated haptic stimuli consisted of the baseline condition, no feedback, friction, detents with 15 degree angle with low and high force intensity, and 45 degree angle with low and high force intensity. We evaluated four different knob shapes, six septic stimuli, and three angles, 45 degree, 135 degree, and 315 degree. All these were evaluated for visual and non-visual interaction and repeated twice, resulting in a total of 288 trials per participant. 16 participants took part in the study. Here's an example of the evaluation with visual feedback and one without visual feedback. Note that there is no pouch shown when the knob is rotated. Interactions with visual feedback were significantly more accurate than interactions without visual feedback. Here we focus on results of conditions without visual feedback. The written knob shape significantly increased the accuracy. The results of the tap and serrated knob shape were similar to the results of the baseline condition. The haptic stimuli also had an influence on the accuracy. A larger step size yielded more accurate results for non-visual interactions. Here we compare the most accurate combinations with the baseline condition, the circular knob shape without feedback. The point and knob shape alone already significantly improved the accuracy. The same applies to the use of stimuli with a large step size. The combination of these two yielded the most accurate results. Next we look at the influence of the stimuli on the duration of the interaction. The haptic stimuli did not have a significant effect on the duration for 45 degree angles, and neither for 135 degree angles. Overall interactions were faster for visual conditions compared to non-visual conditions. For 315 degree angles, step stimuli with a large step size and high force intensity significantly increased the duration for non-visual interactions when compared to conditions without feedback. We also recorded the interactions with Dynanop. Based on the video analysis, we identified four interaction techniques that were frequently used by participants. Participants often rotate a dynop with two or three fingers grasped from the side, or with four or five fingers from above. The triangular protrusion of the point knob shape was used as handle, and some of the rotations were performed with one finger at a fixed location on the side of the knob. Based on our findings, we have formulated six implications for the design of dynamic input devices. Shape change and visual feedback. Shape change appeared to be redundant when adequate visual feedback was available. However, based on our findings, we argue that shape change could be used to improve the performance for ice-free interaction. Avoid the need for exploratory procedures. Participants often did not notice the triangular protrusion of the point and up shape during the non-visual interactions. To benefit from shape change for ice-free interaction, we argue that changes should be noticeable without extensive explorations. Balancing perception and distraction when reducing visual workload. On the one hand, shape change should be perceivable without exploration. On the other hand, shape change should be subtle enough to avoid distraction from the main tasks, for example driving. Position indicator. A tangible position indicator can be used to improve the accuracy for ice-free interaction. When utilizing a position indicator, the spatial mapping needs to correspond to the output presented elsewhere. More variation is possible with knobs that do not have an indicator, allowing for more precise and faster input. Tick stimuli and performance for non-visual interactions. Constant stimuli seem better suited to fast rotations that do not require high accuracy. Most step stimuli with high force intensities are more appropriate for slow and precise rotation. Combination of knob shape and haptic stimulus. For optimal performance in terms of accuracy for non-visual interaction, a tangible indicator combined with a step stimulus with a large step size yields the best results.